Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I hope that you are having a wonderful Friday and happy beginning of November. How awesome is that? We are this much closer to Christmas. I mean, guys, not that I don't love my hocus and my pocus and my little bitty, you know, ghostesses right here, cause I do, I really, really do, but I am a Christmas girl at heart. It is my favorite holiday and it's Aaron's favorite holiday because of the cold and just uh, the, the fact that you have to bundle up and get all cozy and stuff. Like, cozy should be my middle name. Courtney Cozy, wouldn't that be cool? So, um, since it is the beginning of November, that means that the end of October has happened, and in this month I have read seven books, which I think is pretty darn good. Um, out of those seven books, one of them was on my TBR. So, does, I mean, that sort of counts. I read one of the books from my TBR. So, oh, hello, Cleo. She says, hi. Say hi to everyone, huh? Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. <coughs> Not hi. Alrighty. So let's start with the very first book that I did read. Um, is it close by? It is. It's underneath my little bitty owl. And so it is A Potion to Die For by Heather Blake. This was the Cozy Mystery Book Club book of the month for October. I absolutely loved it. I gave it a five out of five stars. This is the first one in a Magic Potion mystery series. It follows Carly Bell Hartwell. She is the owner of the Little Shop of Potions and people come to her for all different types of ailments, whether it's they're having an upset stomach or they believe um, that they could be better in the bedroom area, if you get what I'm saying. And so she's used to helping people with her potions. And when she opens the store one morning, she finds a body of a dead lawyer on her floor, her shop floor, and with a bottle of um, one of her potion, or a potion bottle of hers in hand. She knows that it's hers due to the fact that she has hers specially made. And she has to figure out who did it because it wasn't her, she can't afford to lose her shop. And so it was just really, really cute. I did start it in audiobook form, but it's based in the South, which is, there's nothing wrong with based in the South. I live in Oklahoma. Um, but the audio book, like, she was way too Southern. Like, I don't know, her accent of a Southerner kind of put me over the edge and I couldn't really pay attention. Um, so I stopped the audio book and then I just physically read it and I really, really enjoyed the book. It was, it was good. I would recommend and I would, you know, pick up the second one as well. The next four books that I read are from the Pyridel Cafe Mystery Series by um, Agatha Frost, and I I love this series, guys. You know how much I love this series. I read 11, 12, 13, and 14 this month. Um, I didn't realize I had gotten that behind, but she writes them pretty quickly. They are shorter than normal cozies. They're about... Um, anywhere between 35,000 and 55,000 words. Um, a normal cozy is about 70 to 100,000, so they're a lot quicker to read. Another thing that I uh, love about them is that they're all on Kindle Unlimited, so if you haven't um, heard of Kindle Unlimited or um, maybe you uh, just decided that maybe that's just not for you, it is $9.99 a month, and then you can bring up to Hold on, there's a plane. Because I'm assuming if I can hear it, you can hear it. So with Kindle Unlimited, you can um, download to your Kindle 10 books. Once you're done with them, you just send them back and you can get 10 more. And there are hundreds of thousands of books throughout all of the genres that you can um, do. I have found um, two of my absolute favorite artists or authors, um, Agatha Frost and London Lovett through the Kindle Unlimited. So I read Cupcakes and Casualties. It was all about a newcomer coming into Pyridel 
after Barker's cottage got destroyed, he sold it to this actress and um, there's sort of like a 50-50, a half the people don't want her there and then the other half of the people are in, you know, starstruck about her and um, there's also a scandal going on. Um, one of the construction guys is killed and Julia, the main character, was one of the last ones to see him alive and then there's another mystery going on. One of the construction crew members looks vaguely familiar to Julia and so she's trying to figure out what their connection is and it was really, really fun to read. The next one is Blueberry Muffins and Misfortune. And this is all about how Barker now is finished with his first mystery book. And he is um, going on a tour in a way. And the very first one that he does is at the Pyridale Library. It is a packed house, mostly because he's a really good looking guy but he's an ex-detective now, he's retired, and now he's this author, and so Julia's super excited for him and super happy, and so she decides that she's going to bake blueberry muffins for the event, but her um, oven gets broken, and while it's trying to get fixed, Jess, her adoptive daughter, goes and buys a whole bunch of store muffins, and Julia's very upset about it because she doesn't want store muffins to be under her name, but she's kind of salty about it when most of the people like those store muffins better, and they say that it's her best work yet, she's kind of not okay with that. Good thing is, or bad thing, I guess it's a little bit of both, that all of the muffins don't necessarily get eaten because a body falls from the ceiling during the party, and it seems to be Dot's best friend who left, um, really, really quickly, 10 years ago, to go to Mexico, and so for Dot, Julia has decided that she's going to try and figure out the who did it. Number 13 is Ice Cream and Incidents. This is probably um, one of my absolute favorite of the series. I love the fact that um, Jules, Barker, Jess, and her brother get to um, go to, it's called, Blackpool. They go to Blackpool and they're really, really excited because it's like a paid vacation for a weekend, but they don't realize that the place that they're staying in is a drag inn, like a drag queen inn. Oh my God, that was fantastic. I could just hear the attitude. My sister and I have gone to multiple drag shows and God, they look so much prettier than me. Like their makeup is on fleek and their hair is perfect and they smell amazing. And so I could just picture all of this in my head and it was wonderful. I loved it so much. And so it seems like, you know, the night's going really, really well. The very first night they go to a drag show, Barker gets pulled up on stage. It's hilarious. I love it. And then the last act is and the diva is on the stage and a big, huge lighting goes and falls and hits that drag queen. Um, and they're trying to figure out if it's an accident or if this was intentional. And so um, Julia keeps telling herself, no, I'm not going to go into it. No, I'm not going to go into it. But then she be starts befriending the owner of the inn and she of course has to get into it and figure out what happened. It's amazing and I love it. I will say though that my most favorite of the series so far is number 14. It is champagne and ca uh, catastrophes. And I, I love this because I feel like one, I feel like it's one of the longest. I'm not sure if it is, but I love the fact that you get to see sort of the imperfect side of Julia. She's, um, her and Barker have finally set a wedding date and they are trying to figure out what to plan, how to plan it, but what's, you know, pretty good luck and in timing across the street, someone moves in and Julia goes to go introduce herself and realizes that it's one of her best friends from high school, you know, um, She's super excited about that and then she learns that she is a wedding planner, which is awesome. And then Julia's super excited to get the gang back together, um, Roxy and Johnny and Leah and her because that's, 
you know, they were all chummy and everything. And then when Julia calls Roxy and talks to Johnny about Leah being in town, they have like this irrational anger towards her that they're not like Julia doesn't understand why because she had lived in London with her ex-husband for 12 years but no one ever told her anything and finally Julia goes to um, confront Leah and Leah is disappeared her living room is a mess there's blood and Julia no matter what anybody else thinks of Leah she's still a human being and she is going to go and figure out what happened to Leah the next two books I read are comic books and I got them from NetGalley. If you don't know what NetGalley is, it is an amazing place to go and find ARCs, advanced reader copies, and you can review them on there. So both of the comics that I chose are um, ARCs. The first one that I want to talk about is Book Love. Guys, if you love books, if you have a bookstagram, if you look up books, if you read, yeah. This is the comic for you. I loved this so much. It was cute. It even had little uh, comics about, you know, the perfect uh, bookstagram posts and things. It was so, so cute. And I read it, like, I read it pretty quickly, but I'm, I keep scrolling through the pages because of just how adorable they are. It's amazing. And then the last book that I read for October is Loading Penguin Hugs, Heartwarming Comics from um, Cheebird and I mean, just look at the cover. It's freaking adorable. There's a little bitty birdie like, oh. I mean, I don't know. It's just super cute. And it's just, if you're having a bad day, you flip through that book and for some reason you automatically feel better. And I love that about it. It's, it would be like the perfect coffee table book or the perfect book to like put in the bathroom when you're going to the restroom. You know, you like flip through things. Um, and it, it was just so, so much fun to read, and it was so cute, and I rated it a five out of five stars, just like Book Love, and you know, I think that that was a pretty good um, wrap up for the month of October, even though I technically only, uh, out of all seven books that I read, I only read one that was on my TBR, but you know what, that's better than none, right? Yes, it is. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I have almost made it to reading 52 cozies in a year. I think I only have like four more to read and then I will have read 52 cozies for the 52 weeks of the year, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, like I'm really stoked about that. So let me know, what did you read this month that was absolutely amazing that you think that I would like? Leave it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and seeing my face. I love all of the comments that you guys have been leaving and I really, really love the family that I've created here, that we've created. It's just been so much fun. I love you guys so much. So please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.